my research focuses on how the brain makes decisions, and we study uh, decision making in a number of contexts under conditions of uncertainty and risk, when the world is complicated by the behavior of others, and we try to understand what mechanisms in the brain actually drive us to make the decisions that we do to make the choices we make. When we make a decision, say you choose to buy a stock or sell it short, or to eat a donut instead of an apple, why do you make that decision? That's a key question for us, and we approach that question using a number of different techniques. Uh, one way we do this is to study the behavior of people making choices and to study what happens in their brains when they make those choices. We also compare these choices to those of animals when they're making very similar kinds of decisions, and then we can look at what happens in their brains when they make these choices. And one of the fascinating takeaways from our research is that people and animals tend to make very similar kinds of decisions when they are in similar kinds of contexts. And moreover, their brains seem to make these decisions using a similar set of mechanisms. So what this means is that we can uh, infer that much of our own behavior, the choices we make, even in a very complex situation such as a market, are driven by forces that evolved a long time ago to solve the kinds of problems that animals need to solve, such as finding food, finding a mate, making friends and allies that will help to uh, solve the problems that they need to solve. I think we're all aware that the kinds of choices we make are very influenced by the people around us. And in fact, this is very true of other animals as well. And one thing that we have learned from studying the choices that animals make and the choices that people make and what happens in their brains when they make these choices is that there are very specific, highly specialized mechanisms that detect the presence of other individuals, identify who they are, evaluate their importance to us, and allow us to learn from their behavior. More recently, we've identified a very specific set of brain cells that actually responds when another individual feels a reward. What's a really Im interesting and important potential practical application of this discovery is that we might find ways, either behaviorally or pharmacologically or using other means, to activate these cells. And if we did so, we might be able to promote charitable giving, donation to public goods, and other kinds of pro-social behaviors. And this could be a very uh, important and practical way of enhancing the welfare of society. We're now building on the work that we've done looking at the brain mechanisms that respond to our social environment. We're now looking at those processes in the brain that allow us to learn from the experiences of other individuals, to use that information to guide our choices, and how that information might be used to behave strategically with regard to another individual. So when do we cooperate? When do we uh, defect? When do we deceive others? How can we understand these, how this happens in the brain, and how can we change it if we want to make better decisions?